Hello everyone, welcome to Ayurveda's Diary and welcome to our 90 days Bible study. Today is day 15 and we're going to be looking at Romans chapter 7. Okay, Romans chapter 7. I'll read um, through Romans chapter 7 and then we'll take a deeper look at it. It says, Know you, know you not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law has, has dominion over a man as long as he lives. But the woman which has a husband is bound by the law of her husband, so long as he lives. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband lives, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Therefore, my brethren, ye are also become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be married to another man, even to him who is raised from the dead, that you should bring forth fruit to God. For when you were in the flesh, the motions of sin which were by the Lord did work in our members to bring forth fruit to death. But now ye are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in the in newness of spirit and not in oldness of letter. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lost, except the law had said, You shall not convert. For sin taking occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of conspicence. For without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be to death. For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy. The law is holy. And the commandment holy, and just, and good. Was then that which is good made to death to me, God forbid, was sin, that it might appear sin walking death in me by that which is good that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful for we know that the law is spiritual but i am carnal sold under sin for that which i do allow not for what i would that i do not for what i hate that i do if then i do that which i would i would not i consent to the law that it is good now then it is to me it is no more i that do it but sin that dwells in me for i know that in me that is in my flesh dwells no good thing for to will is present with me but how to perform that which is good i find not for the good that i would i do not for the evil which i would not that i do now if if i do that I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O wretched man that I am! Who shall deliver me from the body of sin, from the body of this dirt? I thank God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, so that with the mind I myself, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Praise God. Today, we are looking at Romans 7. Romans 7. From verse 1 to 25. 
And in the course of this 90 day Bible study, we have, we have studied different parts of the scripture. And I'm grateful to God that he has helped us this far. And I'm grateful to God that he has shown us the things that we know not. Now, we're studying the book of Romans. And God has been talking to us about about the law, about sin, and about our new nature. About the law, about sin, about our new nature in God. And it's very interesting that Apostle Paul will take so much time to talk about these things, to explain these things to us. It's very interesting that it will take so much time to talk about the law, about sin, about who we are now in Christ. Because it is important for us to know who we are in Christ Jesus. It is important for us to know who we are in Christ Jesus. It is not only important for us to know who we are in Christ Jesus because we need to know our, start, our, our standing with God. But it is important for us to know that we have the power, we have it in us to live above sin. It is important for us to know that the law of God is good. Because when the Bible says, Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not convert, it is for our own good. It is prim primarily for our own good and for the good of every other person around us. Because when you take something that belongs to another person, you would cause pain to that other person. When you take something that belongs to another person, you will cause pain to that other person. When you, when you lie to someone, you're giving the wrong information that if the other person acts on it, can have their consequences. So the law of God is, in itself is good. But Paul explains today that sin takes occasion of the law to differentiate between good and evil and then make us tilt towards doing that which is not right, that which is evil, okay? And as a result, draw us away from that which is good. And because we are drawn away from doing that which is good, what then is supposed to be good to us becomes evil. Because we are not able to live right according to the law of God that has been given to us. Praise God. So today, we're going to, 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 to study how it is that the grace of God helps us to overcome or to, to put under our flesh. How it is that the grace of God helps us to live by grace so that when we walk in this flesh we do not walk according to the flesh but we walk by the law of life unto grace through Christ Jesus and he uses the example of a woman that is married to a man And he says, as long as that man is alive, she is married to him. And if she leaves him while he is still alive and becomes married to another person, then we can say that she has committed adultery. Okay? But if the man be dead, then... She is 
free from the Lord that binds her to him. And so when she marries another man, she's not seen as an adulteress. Okay? Now, it's the same thing that happens with the law. When we are under the law, we are bound by the law to obey it. We are bound to live by the law. And when we when we err under the law, we are bound by the law, okay, to face the consequences of our end errors. Like we are bound by the law to face the consequences, to reap the fruit or to be to be tapped by the the tenants of the law. But when that law becomes no longer existent, when that law becomes abolished, and we can literally say when the law dies, then we can come into the fullness of grace. Okay? So what the Bible is explaining to us today is the fact that the grace of God fulfills the law and because the grace of God fulfills the law we are made right unto God praise God so just like the woman who is no longer bound by the law of marriage to her husband because the husband is no more and then she is free to marry another man so also are we no longer bound by sin because we are free from sin by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, it says that, For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do allow not, for what I would, that I do not. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I choose to, I consent to the law that it is good. So the law is good, no doubt about it. Now it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwells no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. So the will is there to always do the right thing. The knowing, the acknowledgement that this is right and this is wrong is always present. Okay? But the, the will is there, but most of the time, when we live in the flesh, when we live by the law of the flesh, by the laws of this earth, we realize that the things that we do not want to do, we constantly find ourselves doing it. So when you've made up your mind, I'm not going to lie to anyone, then something happens and you realize, oh, I am unable to tell the truth. And because of that, you realize, oh, you, 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 you fo follow up a lie with another lie. Because you are not able to stick by the truth. Not because you do not wish to say the truth, but because you are weak in your flesh. So what the grace of God comes to do is to help us, help our infirmities, and deliver us from the grips of sin. And bring us into the glorious liberty of Christ. Wherein, when you are faced with the same situation, now because of the indwelling of the Spirit of God in you, and because of the grace of God that is available in you, when you start your conversation, you are no longer looking at saving yourself, but you are now looking at pleasing God. Praise God. You're no longer trying to do it by yourself. But you now have the help of the Holy Spirit in you. And the grace of God in you helps you to do the right things. 
the grace of God in you helps you to be right, to live right, and to do right by God and by the next person to you. So you are able to tell the truth. You are able to stand by the truth. Not because you have the strength in you, in your flesh, but because you have the grace of God to do that which is right. Praise the Lord. So the grace of God abounds towards us. The grace of God enables us to do that which is right by God. And because of this, you can say this and this and these are the things that happened. And then you leave it as plain as possible. And let the person know this is how it happened. I'm sorry it happened this way. I ask you to forgive me. But there is nothing I can do. Or I'm sorry this is how it happened. Or I'm sorry this is this. Or you just go. Oh. Before you even get to that place. You pray. And you get to that particular point And you're like. Oh, okay you were thinking. This is what you would say. But because you have asked God to help you. And then you get there and it just becomes easier for you to tell the truth. Not because you are perfect in your flesh. But because the spirit of God in you enables you to live right. Now this is beyond the law. This is grace that is at work in you. And this is the dimension that God wants us to start operating in as his children. This is the dimension that God wants us to start operating in as his own. The dimension of grace. Now, it is not because you will, but it is because the power of God that is made available in you, the spirit of God, the spirit of truth is in you. And so when you engage the spirit of truth, when you engage the spirit of life, the only thing that you can that can be the result of that thing is life. So when you have the urge to do that which is wrong, you do not fight it only by yourself. You engage the spirit of God in you. And I remember something that a man of God I respect so much would usually say that we the Bible says we should not live by the flesh. It is not because the bible says it wants us to 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 die that is not the exact way he puts it but i'm trying to paraphrase it but because the bible wants us to realize that the spirit of god is available and alive in us to help us to live right by god the spirit of god is there to help us the spirit of god is always there so god is not just interested in your spiritual life in going in you going to church carrying the bible maybe on sundays is interested in your everyday life so even when you have an interview god is interested in you doing well in that interview so when you are planning what you would say you should also engage the spirit of god to help you praise god so god is not only interested in your academics is also interested in you succeeding so as much as you're studying to to ease your exams you should also engage the spirit of god to help you to study to help you to live right when you are made the treasurer and you're put in charge of the treasury the Spirit of God is not only there to help you to keep right records, but the Spirit of God is, is there to help you not to embezzle funds. So that when temptation and situations are right, where you think of an easy option, which is to dip your hand in the pocket of the, of the organization and use the money for your own good, you are able to engage the Spirit of God. You are able to pray. You are able to engage God 
and to seek his face and then help arises for you without you doing the wrong things now that is what this is about that is what this is about it is not about you being able to do it on your own it is about you seeking the help of god realizing that your in yourself by yourself it is not going to work but by the help of the holy spirit you are able to live under grace and be able to do the supernatural so the reason why most people fail to live up to the standard in life or to obey the law is because they are struggling to do these things by themselves. But the truth is that human nature in itself is selfish. And self-pleasing. But it is the grace of God that is and enables us to live right. It is the grace of God that, em that empowers us to do the right things. Okay, so what the Bible makes us realize today from this Romans 7 is that the grace of God is always available to help us to live right. The grace of God is always available to help us to do that which is right. If only we would engage the Spirit of God. So the Spirit of God is there to help you to do the right things. You are not to struggle to live right by your flesh. You are to do it by the grace of God that is available to you. And to engage the Spirit of God. So God is not only interested in you reading the Bible. God is interested in you living out the things of, the, of God. Living out the scripture. So you are to engage the Spirit of God. In your academics, in your marriage, in your finances, in your duty, you are the accountant and you are in charge of the outflows of the company. God, the Spirit of God is there to help you to keep the right records. He is there to help you not to be not to go into fraud. So when the temptation arises and maybe your child is sick in the hospital, the Spirit of God is there to help you to live right. Praise God. The Spirit of God is there to help you so that when you're when people are saying, but you're in, in charge of the account, you can just, you know, put your hand in the pocket of the company. Nobody will know. It's what you record that will be recorded. And you're like, no, I'm a child of God. And then you begin to pray and help arises for you. And then suddenly your child becomes well. And people are wondering, how did you do it? And you tell them, oh, the Spirit of God let me. I laid my hands on my child. I prayed for her and she became well. And then the funds of the, of the company are intact. And people begin to wonder, how does it do these things? It is not by your flesh. It is not by the power that is available in you by yourself. It is because the Spirit of God, the grace of God is available for you to live right. So it is not because you are able to keep the law in your flesh. It is the working of the Holy Spirit in you that helps you to do right. And then people come to you and say, who is this God that you serve, that is able to save you? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hello, Tosin. It is the Spirit of God that helps you to live right. It is the Spirit of God that helps you to do the things of God. So it is not because you are able to walk in your flesh and to do these things by yourself. It is the grace of God that is available in you. So we are to engage God in every area of our life. Not just some people are so spiritual when you see them in church on Sunday and they are blasting in tongues. It is beyond being spiritual in church. It is being spiritual in every area of your life. It is bringing God into what would I wear to work. It is bringing God into how do I respond to this query. It is bringing God into how do I break this down to this person. Because it is hard to tell the truth. It is bringing God into every aspect of your life. And that is how this revival we are talking about is going to break out. Praise God. 
It, this is how the revival will start when Christians are no longer afraid to live by God in their secular life as they live by God in their quote and unquote spiritual life. Because God is a spirit and every man that God created has a spirit. And until you begin to empower the spirit of God in you, you are not able to live right by God. Until you are able to empower the spirit of God in you to live every aspect of your life, you are not able to live right by God. And so Apostle Paul acknowledges that I myself am not perfect. Just that I acknowledge that I myself am not perfect. I'm not able to keep the law 100%. But the grace of God is available in me. The power of God is working in me. Now, the Holy Spirit is helping me to realize the reason we have a lot of Christians, but little or no display of the power of God is because we limit God to certain aspects of our lives. The reason a lot of us are not able to achieve so much in life is because we limit God in certain aspects of our lives and that is why we have a lot of christians out there that are not able to achieve a lot in life because we limit god to maybe an aspect we have seen in work some people limit god to their health so anytime they are sick they are able to pray and they become well but they don't involve god in their finances so they are not able to break even or break through in terms of financial strength. But when we begin to realize that the power of God is available in every area of our lives, that day we realize that things begin to change for us. So the reason be that the reason behind a lot of Christians not exercising the power of god is not because the power of god is not available it is because we are not engaging the power of god that is available it is because we are not engaging the grace of god that is available and that is why i agree with a lot of people that say the bible is a complete book why because it is applicable in every aspect of our life only if we choose to apply it So today, Apostle Paul tells us that in the flesh, every man is weak. Going by the flesh, every man is weak. But by the grace of God, by the help of the Spirit of God, we are strengthened. We are empowered to live right. So today, I challenge you. Today, I challenge you to engage the power of God in you. I challenge you to engage the power of God that is alive in you to live right. Engage God and see the difference that it will make. I am challenging you today to engage God in every area of your life. Just decide that today, this day, I would engage God. Before I take any decision, I would engage God. And see how wonderful God is. And how powerful He is. Praise God. Thank you so much for joining this live broadcast. Thank you, Tosin. Thank you, Dayo. Thank you, everyone that came online today. Um, I think I have someone else. I have my baby, my baby, and these, everyone that came online today, thank you so much for joining. God bless you. Let's meet again tomorrow. I'm, I'm considering um, doing Facebook Live because some people, um, someone complained about data. Um, Instagram taking a lot of data, so I'm considering that probably tomorrow would be Facebook Live. 
that I promised that on Instagram I would always upload the videos of the live sessions. And on YouTube, every day, our videos are uploaded so that people that are not able to join the live stream are able to see the full video on YouTube. Thank you so much for coming online. God bless you. Keep living by the strength of God. God bless you. See you tomorrow.